Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Camouflage of the World. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite U.S. patterns just for the uniqueness and kind of craziness and how inspirational it was for later patterns is the U.S. Six Color Desert Pattern, a.k.a. Chocolate Chip. Uh, it's called Chocolate Chip for obvious reasons, as you can see. But uh, we're going to get into kind of the history of it and then how this uniform performed and then how long it was used, etc., etc., so basically in the late 1960s, there was a lot of conflict happening uh, in the Middle East, particularly with Israel and surrounding Arab nations. So the U.S. kind of had a feeling that they would have to get involved at some point in a desert environment. And since we didn't have an actual desert camouflage pattern, uh, testing began in the California desert. I'm guessing around Fort Irwin's on the Mojave Desert. Um, and in that particular desert, which is every desert's unique, just like every set of woods and jungles unique. There's a lot of little rocks. There's a lot of little rocks that sit there and they create shadows. So they figured out that they would kind of take all these different colors that are commonly found in the desert, i.e. This, uh, this khaki color, this kind of lighter green color, this light khaki color, or almost white, uh, light brown, dark brown. So, I mean, they kind of overdid it, I think, but uh, I mean, I see where they were coming from. And then they, they use the little uh, black, dots right here to kind of simulate the shadows that the rocks create. Now, in 1973, these things started to be produced officially, but not in huge numbers because things started to cool down a little bit with Israel and uh, them kicking the shit out of the surrounding countries that were trying to attack them. So the U.S. kind of didn't focus on producing these in a large scale until the early 1980s when uh, things started to heat kind of back up and some other things were going down in the Middle East. And we were, uh, we were in the Sinai Peninsula doing joint operations with some other countries. It's kind of like a peacekeeping thing. Um, I forgot the exact name of it. And this was actually the first time that these were worn and seen by foreign nations that the U.S. actually had a desert camouflage uniform. So, fast forward a few years to the first Gulf War in 1990, Operation Desert Shield, and 1991, Operation Desert Storm. That's the most famous usage of this camouflage pattern by U.S. forces. And uh, it... Actually, uh, it worked fairly decently. Um, it's a lot better than wearing woodland camouflage. It's still a little bit dark. Uh, for everybody I've talked to, and I've actually seen this stuff being worn in real life, but we'll get to that in a second. It's a little bit dark uh, for a desert. Most deserts in the world are lighter colored, and that's going to be a problem when you are um, when you got all this dark brown and this black in here. That being said, it still is not terrible. It's a lot better than, again, wearing woodland stuff. So... Uh, the U.S. forces were wearing these in the first Gulf War, and some other countries kind of patterned or pretty much copied this pattern as well, and maybe put their own flair on it. Some added colors, some removed colors, but this was actually a pretty standard pattern around the world from like the 80s through the early 90s, and actually beyond with some countries, which I'll get to in a second. So after the first Gulf War came to an end in you know a few hours, and everybody got sent home. These things were kind of put in storage again, and then 1993 happens with um, the issue in Somalia with the peacekeeping mission. These were issued again. Now, at that point, the Three Color Desert, which I'll make another video on, obviously, was coming into uh, kind of be the, the main issue, but there were so many leftover stocks of these that they decided to issue these as well, and the helmet covers and all that stuff. Uh, they made a lot of gear in this, but they didn't actually make, like, body armor in this. They made a cover for it, but they didn't make body armor in this color because of the fact that we weren't deploying to desert environments all the time. So um, this is actually being worn um, still today by a lot of forces in the Middle East. Uh, when I was uh, deployed to Iraq in 2009, the Iraqi army and Iraqi police were wearing three or uh, six colored chocolate chip stuff like this. They were moving towards like a new digital pattern and some other weird experimental stuff. But the majority of them were wearing this pattern. It was uh, stuff that was made in China and Korea, but it was still this, this six color pattern. And it actually did not work terribly. It works better in urban environments in Iraq and stuff uh, than, than just you know out in kind of rural areas, but it still is a lot better than woodland and it's a hell of a lot better than UCP. So uh, it works pretty well in the desert compared to UCP, but I mean, you can wear black in the desert and it would work better than UCP. So um, anyway, I'll stop ragging on that. I just hate that pattern, as you guys know. So, yeah, so the Iraqi army was still wearing this in 2009. And um, it. there's a lot of countries that actually still have a variant of this as their desert pattern, which is really interesting. Now, what was cool about this is this kind of came out a little bit before 
the M83 BDUs, right? Because this is considered the M81 when they started kind of mass producing it. Uh, they started earlier, but again, it's known as the M81 to collectors. So what we've got here is kind of an adaptation. They took the Jungle Fatigues and the Satine Cotton uniforms, the utility uniforms, and kind of combined them to make what's called now the BDU, the Battle Dress Uniform. This is a 50-50 nylon cotton mix. Uh, it's a twill material. It's not ripstop. It's not poplin. Um, it's kind of a heavier material, so I don't understand why they did that for desert stuff. And this one got the Elvis Presley collar on it, so it's like a humongous collar. This is going to be first-gen BDU stuff. Um, I think the Woodlands had, there, had it on there, too. There's like a flap of extra material on the top of the bag. I think it's for your equipment or something. I have no idea, but it actually makes this quite hot to wear in a hot environment, which seems a little bit counterintuitive, but it is what it is. This is the first pair. This particular piece is dated 1986. Um, let's see if I can show you the, so I can show you the tag really quick. Yep. So yeah, 50-50 nylon cotton. And the early BDU Woodland, the M83 Woodland ones were also made out of the same material and then they went to a 50-50 nylon cotton ripstop material later on. Uh, some of these were made out of ripstop, but by the time they actually got issued to troops in Desert Shield and Desert Storm, it, it was too late. Um, it was already over. So most of the guys in the first Gulf War were actually going to be wearing this twill material which is, it's strong, but it, again, it's pretty hot in um, desert environment. Deserts are really hot at, uh, during the day and really cold at night, or it feels cold at night because nothing holds the heat in and there's a big temperature change. So it would kind of suck to have to wear this, sweat all day, and then, you know, when it starts getting a little bit colder, you actually, this thing will absorb sweat, and then you get really cold at night. So largely, though, it's weird. First Gulf War vets that I've talked to, some friends of mine said that it wasn't a terrible uniform at all, and they didn't mind wearing it. It looks really cool. It's very aesthetically pleasing. I actually wear, I got a few pairs of the pants just to wear as work pants because they hide stains pretty well because uh, they're so busy. And um, the actually issued stuff is really hard to get in bigger sizes. I actually found a place, a supplier that has these. This is an extra large regular. This is my particular um, piece for my collection. And uh, once in a while I get these, I put them on pre-order. I might actually just start stocking these uh, with the pants because they're really cool. Um, I usually do the, the jackets or, you know, if I can, I try to stay away from pants because this gives you an overall better idea of the actual whole pattern itself. But I do have the matching pants. They're made out of the same material. They're BDU pants. Pretty cool. Um, let's see what else I have to cover. Not really that much. It's, again, it's one of my favorite patterns. Not because it works well or it's the best pattern, but just because it, it's so unique. It's so cool. And uh, if, if they had a woodland version of this, it might actually do all right, like with the little spots and stuff. I wonder what that would look like. Oh, if only I had the money and the resources to do that. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you consider becoming a supporter on Patreon, the link is in the description. That allows me to help uh, fund the channel because I can't afford to do it out of pocket anymore because I kind of went into debt doing that with guns and stuff. So uh, anyway... Becoming a patron gives you access to some exclusive content on Patreon. It's really easy for me to be interactive with you. And I do take, uh, I do put votes out um, for you guys to vote on what you want me to spend your donation money on for the channel. I make really cool history videos with props and uh, I'm a visual learner, so I like getting props. But again, a lot of them are really expensive. So crowdfunding really helps with that. So if you consider becoming a supporter on there, that'd be great. Again, the link is in the description. If not, I really just appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. I know I went over just the the brief overview and the history of this. It's kind of the point of the whole series. But um, yeah, I hope you learned something. It's a really cool pattern. And if you check out my website and sign up for the newsletter, I might actually just start stocking these as a regular item because they're they're pretty cool and they're popular. And they're, they didn't make a whole hell of a lot of them. So, all right, I'll stop rambling. I appreciate you watching, everybody. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm not an expert on this, but that's about all I know. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next video.